Hey guys, so it's been a little while since I've gotten in front of the camera and talked to you guys. I think it's been about two weeks or maybe two and a half weeks. Um, I do have a lot of videos that were pre-recorded but I never put up because shortly after I filmed, actually two days after I filmed, a day after I filmed, a day after I filmed, something very sad happened in my life. Um, and it's been one of the hardest things I've had to go through in my life. So some of you may already know, some of you may not, but I did talk about it on my Instagram and also on the community page here on my page. Like, I made a post or two about it. Um, but if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that it's always been just me and my two sweet fur babes. They're like my children to me. Both of my fur babes were rescues. I think Kelly was abandoned. She was found outside. Uh, I don't know if someone just like let her out or they moved and left her or she just like, escaped her way out. I have no idea, but we took her in and then Coco, I rescued her from a foster home at nine weeks old. So it's always just been me and my two kitties. They're just like my kids. They're so special to me. They mean so much to me. Like I love them. They are my children. And about six months ago here on my channel, I made a video updating you on my kitten Coco. And at that point, she had just been diagnosed with a rare blood cell cancer. I think she had been diagnosed like a month or two prior to me making that video. Um, I made an Instagram for Coco. I set up a GoFundMe page. Like we just like built this community of people that just like loved on her and loved on me as like her fur mom. People from literally all over the world who didn't even know us that like prayed for us, thought about us, sent me so many messages and sent me so many donations. And it was crazy because these people didn't even know us and here they were like taking time out of their day and donating their hard earned money for someone and a, a kitty who wasn't even theirs and people that they didn't even know. It was crazy but it was such a blessing. Such a blessing. So at this point, it's been about nine months since Coco had been... Ooh. I've been doing okay for the past few days but like talking about it all over again just... It just brings everything back. It's been hard. So for weeks, it felt like every other week, we were going to the vet, to the vet oncologist, actually two vet oncologists, um, and they had never had a case like Coco before, so they were really interested. So so we went through treatment. Um, some days were good, some days were not so bad, some days were really scary. Um, but it was always like a day-by-day -day basis. If you follow Coco's Instagram, like, I post it almost every day or every other day, but especially daily on her stories. So you could, you kept up with everything and you knew everything that happened. And you know, like, if you followed her Instagram, like, some days were good, some days were not so good. Um, and then I got to a point where she was having more bad days and more sick days than good days. But some days where she would have a bad day and then she would, like, bounce right back and she, you would never know that she was sick. She was playful, energetic, she was cuddly, she was so lovey, like, it was so weird, it was just like a day-by-day -day basis, you just like never knew how she was gonna feel. Some days she was great, some days she was great for two or three days, and then she was bad for like another two days, and then back to being good for a, a day or two, like, it was so scattered. But my main focus and always my priority for her was to have a very good quality of life. And I really do believe that that's exactly what she had. So um, about a week and a half ago, at this point today, as I'm filming this, um, I was at home. Look, thank God I'm home. Thank God I work from home. I'm so thankful for that. Um, but I was at home and Coco was sleeping peacefully on the couch right next to me, like two feet away from me. That morning she had gotten up early, she had ate, she was fine, and she was sleeping peacefully. Uh, and she woke up and that's where things got really scary and went downhill so quickly. Uh, I had to take her into the vet immediately. Um, and things just went so downhill so quickly. It was scary. It was so scary. I'm so thankful that Paul was able to pick us up and be there with me, and be there for us for the entire time. Like, I'm so thankful. That was such a blessing to have him there. So, sadly, after nine months of fighting so hard against cancer, Coco sadly passed away in my arms on January 28th. 
And I'm so, I'm so thankful that I had those last final moments with her, although I wish that her last final moments would have been different. I prayed so hard that even if she were to go, that she would just go naturally like, in her sleep. And I know it doesn't always happen like that. I know we would, all of us for moms and for dads would love for it to happen like that if our fur babies were passing away. I know that some people get so lucky like that, but I know majority of us don't. But I'm so thankful that even though her last moments were scary, it was scary for her and... I'm just I'm so thankful that I had her in my arms. I talked to her. I comforted her I told her everything and I loved about her and how I was so thankful for her that she was such a blessing and such a huge joy to my life And although I miss her like crazy. I miss her so deeply I love her so much and I so wish I would have had so many more years with her. She was only a year and a half only a year and a half this poor kitten But I am so thankful that I know that she is in heaven right now like completely happy and fully restored full of energy playing with her favorite foods playing with her favorite toys and playing with all of her fur friends that are up there including my childhood kitty Mara so I find great comfort in knowing that she's up there happy and getting so much more love but I, I miss her so much she was a cat that followed me everywhere she met me right at the door as soon as I came home she would poke her little paw at the door like she was so happy to see me she slept right on my pillow every morning. I woke up, and Coco was literally on my pillow next to my head. She would get underneath the covers, underneath the sheets with me, and cuddle right on my chest. She suckled on my shirt. She kneaded on me. She followed me to the bathroom, you guys. Like, she literally sat on my lap on the toilet. Like, she was attached to my hip. And I, I got out of the shower. She was waiting right there. If I took too long, she would push the bathroom door open and be like, Mom, what are you doing? Like, give me attention. She was always on my lap. If she wasn't with me, she was with Callie. It was either like attached to me or attached to Callie. They cuddled so much. They cuddled all the time, licked each other, gave each other kisses. They cuddled. They were just the sweetest cats together, like the best of friends and the best of sisters. I've always said that. They were literally attached to the hip. So Coco is now peacefully laid to rest at my grandmother's house with my childhood kitty, Mara. They're grave sites are right next to each other. She is wrapped in the blanket that she was wrapped in when she passed away in my arms. We cut that blanket into two pieces, so Coco is wrapped in one part of the blanket and Callie has the other part of the blanket to, to have forever. Uh, she is buried with our Christmas family photo that is Paul and I and the two cats. It's like the only photo I have of me and the two kitties like fully besides a selfie. <laughs> and it's my favorite picture of life. I will always cherish that picture. I have it printed off three different times in my house. Like that picture is in three different areas of my house. I love it. So she's buried with our family picture and her favorite spring ding toy. Oh, she loves those things. Um, a pink one, a pink spring ding toy. And she loves my hair ties. She loves to play fetch with them. So I also put in one of my pink jumbo hair ties that she loved so much. So she is laid to rest peacefully with some of her favorite things that I hope that she is loving and enjoying up in heaven. All last week there wasn't a single day that I didn't cry. I took off a few days of work. I just needed time to like grieve and process everything and grieve with Callie because Callie also lost her sister. And gosh, it was so sad you guys. Like still to this day, it's been a week and a half and and Callie will still like meow excitedly to go into the door or run up to the door to the bedroom and she'll just like look around for, for Coco. It's like look high and low, like go in the closet, go over on my side of the bed, like she just like looks for her. Oh, it's heartbreaking. This whole thing has been so devastating and so heartbroken but I honestly like have so much peace and comfort and like a little bit of like healing in my heart knowing that she's so happy, she's playing up there, she's watching over us and she's okay. She's not getting sick anymore, she's not having pain anymore. And I know she's up there waiting for me one day, so. Uh, if you've ever lost a fur baby, you know how this feels. It's, it's heartbreaking. It's like a piece of you is gone, like you've lost a child. Like, they're part of the family, and uh, it's, it's been hard. It's been hard, but I'm doing okay, and I know every single day is a little bit more of healing. Um, I have printed off so many pictures. I have so many pictures of my cats on my phone, you guys. <laughs> But I printed off my favorite photos. I literally printed off like 80 photos. But I put like my top faves in photo albums around the house. And then I put together like an actual little photo album for her. It has all of her photos and her and Callie's photos together. 
and they're like all over my house so maybe I'll put a few clips in here and you guys can see it but man I love her so much I miss her so much thank you guys all for your patience with me um, for taking this time to grieve and go through this in my life thank you for all the messages the comments the DMs like thanks for all the prayers the thoughts the donations to her GoFundMe for treatment like you guys have truly been such a blessing. Like I've said so many times, I don't know what I would do without this family here. You guys have really helped pull me through. You guys are like friends, like family to me, literally. Like I have such good connection and friendships and relationships with you guys, and I'm so thankful for that. Some of you loved Coco like she was your own and like truly sent me genuine like long messages. And I'm I'm thankful for that. I'm so grateful. I do have some videos that are pre-recorded, videos that I recorded right before Coco passed, so I do need to still edit those and get those up. So my next few videos will be those pre-recorded videos, and then I'm hoping to get back into filming. Like, once I just feel, like, more like my bubbly, energetic, like, happy self, and I'm getting there, but I feel like I may need just, like, a few more days. So maybe by this weekend, um... Here in a few days I'll be back to filming but until then my next few videos will be my pre-recorded videos <sighs> I love you guys so much thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen and watch this video I love you guys so so much and I will see you in a few days with a brand new video I love you guys bye